hey everyone, before I get into this video, I want to remind you, we got two giveaways going on. One for three copies of Super Mario 3D All-Stars, another for a Switch Lite and two games of choice. Head down to the description to find out to enter. Winners are announced on October 1st. Good luck. Alright, so there is a uh, major, major lawsuit going on against Nintendo right now. Uh, and this lawsuit comes from an actual government agency who's going after Nintendo for Joy-Con issues. In fact, it's so crazy that according to their research, 65% of Joy-Cons fail within the first year of purchase. Now, we've known about the Joy-Con drift. We've, we've known about this issue forever, right? It's been around since the very launch of the Switch. And yes, a lot of us have experienced it, but we don't really know that there hasn't been like a, a, a big enough, a, a wide enough net cast to find out how bad Joy-Con drift actually is. We know it's bad enough that Nintendo's been offering free repairs, but we don't know actually how bad it is. Like what percentage of Joy-Con are actually drifting in the first year, which is the warranty year. And 65% is what this, this people came up with. Now, this is actually a French government group. And uh, it, it, the article itself is in French. So I'm kind of using a translation that was done over on Reset Era. Uh, but essentially it goes, France's main consumer group is suing Nintendo because they claim Nintendo is knowingly selling Joy-Cons that are designed to fail after less than a year of regular use. According to their study, 65% of survey consumers said their Joy-Cons failed after less than a year, regardless of the user's profile and how much they play. 25% failed after less than six months. Some machine translated pieces of the article. After having collected more than five thousand testimonials in only 48 hours they decided to diligently conduct an expertise on several defective controllers more or less recent in order to analyze the origin of this failure they said in their press release the result the experts noted that nintendo had made changes to the design of its controllers a few months ago but not to the problem that caused the failures while nintendo was informed of this malfunction the japanese giant chose not to intervene on the components subject to this failure Experts have found two possible causes for the problem. Premature wear of the printed circuit boards and a leak that causes a disturbing amount of debris and dust within the joystick. By not modifying these characteristics, denounces the association, the company continues to sell joysticks that are designed to fail before the end of the first year of use with full knowledge of these facts. According to the association, Nintendo indulges in practices of programmed obsolescence. The thousands of testimonials received by the UFCQ um, choice here have allowed it to get a more accurate picture of the problem. 65% of consumers' victims noticed this breakdown less than a year after purchasing the controllers. It appears regardless of the player's profile or age or even when playing less than five hours a week. 25% of consumers saw the failure occurring within six months of purchase despite low usage of the console. This is huge. This is a government agency going after Nintendo for knowingly selling defective products. That's what that's what programmed obsolescence means. It means that Nintendo is knowingly selling products that are defective and doing nothing about it. It is actually against the law in many, many countries to sell products that are knowingly intended to fail, essentially. But, well, that, that's kind of the claim. The lawsuit's claim is that Nintendo is selling these products intending them to fail, which the idea is for, you know, not to take it for people not to take advantage of the warranty, but to go buy more of them. Now, this is true of certain devices. There are devices out there that are not meant to last forever. Our phones, as an example, right? You buy a new phone, right? Say you buy the latest iPhone this year, or the iPhone 12, or whatever they decide to call it. You buy the new one this year, and you're all happy with it. Wait three years. Tell me if you're still happy with the phone. I say this because they release software updates and certain things that intentionally make the phone slower. Also, the, the phone's SSD, RAM, and everything is kind of meant to have this slow degradation to eventually get you to convince you to upgrade because your phone is just so slow. This happens with a lot of devices, not just Apple, so I'm not trying to just pick on them. But the point is that like there are degradation points for certain devices. But most countries, I said most, not all, most countries require that your product works for the extent of the warranty. So while there's there's an expected to be, you know, outliers that, that don't work and that's why the warranty exists, in general, if you make a product, it should last a full year before a consumer needs to worry about a replacement. 
There's a one-year warranty on all Nintendo Switches worldwide. What they are claiming is the failure rate being at 65% before the end of that first year constitutes a known problem that Nintendo is willfully doing, knowing that a lot of consumers will not take advantage of that warranty and will instead buy more. It is considered an extremely shady business practice, and it's it's maybe the one thing this generation that Nintendo has been consistently criticized for because Joy-Con drift affects many of us. It's affected me. Maybe it's affected you. I've done polls uh, on my uh, on my YouTube channel, and maybe I'll do another one on this. You know, how many people have experienced Joy-Con drift? Because uh, Joy-Con drift is a major issue. It, it's been a major issue. And as much as we applaud Nintendo for offering free repairs outside of warranty, especially in the United States, they're not offering those repairs worldwide. The United States, Nintendo of America, is offering free repairs outside of warranty. Not everyone is. And the thing is, the free repairs don't fix the issue. Because what they're doing is they're just taking out the Joy-Con and putting, or taking out the control stick and putting a new one in that's going to break again within a year. You're just going to have the same problem happen again. And again, we know others on YouTube have, have torn it apart and shown what they believe to be the issue. Uh, obviously, you know, this is a government agency that said that they believe there's two possible issues. One, the board could, might, might be degradating. And what they mean by that is uh, when you go, in, when you go in, inside the uh, joystick, there's a little board in there. Uh, and on that board, there's a pad. And we, we saw this, I believe it was Spawnway that broke it down a long time ago. There's a pad in there that's easily dented and scratched. And on Joy-Cons that are drifting, it, it looks like it's dented and scratched in comparison to Joy-Cons that aren't drifting. That would be board-related. That, that they're, they're saying like that that degradates, right? That, that degrades. Uh, the other thing is obviously that it doesn't... Um, it doesn't do a good enough job keeping debris out, right? So, like, it grinds or it's letting dust get in, and, and that's affecting things. So, they can't definitively prove which issue is causing it. It's just they, they've they narrowed it down to those are one or two issues because those are things they're noticing in Joy-Cons that drift and Joy-Cons that don't drift. Some have dust and degradation. Some don't. So, it, it's, it's a very serious thing. Nintendo has been ignoring this for a long time, and we know... Uh, out in the UK, remember we recently put a video up on this. Someone sued Nintendo over Joy-Con drift and won. They beat Nintendo, but it wasn't some massive lawsuit. It was an individual small claims court lawsuit. The guy won. He got his his court fees covered. Uh, he didn't have a lawyer representing him. It was just him. So he had his court fees covered, and then he got his money back for his Joy Cons, which he used to buy a new pair of Joy Cons. That's all he wanted. He just wanted a refund. Nintendo denied him a refund, and that's what he went to court over. So Nintendo's already lost a suit over Joy-Cons out in uh, the UK. There's also a massive class action lawsuit that's been in the works against Nintendo here in the United States over Joy-Con drift. I don't know where that is right now. I know it's been filed, but in the United States, uh, legal matters that aren't ran by the government and are just like, you know, a, a lawyer gathering a bunch of people to make, 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 a, make a big deal out of it take forever. Um, you know, like DeVry University lost a lawsuit and I've actually got a paycheck. I went, I went to DeVry University. Uh, they had false advertising and they got busted for it. And, uh, it took six years for that lawsuit to resolve six years. So even if this, this Joy-Con lawsuit, you know, this class action lawsuit against Nintendo goes through in the U S and Nintendo loses, none of us are going to see refunds or anything out of it that signed that class action lawsuit until, I don't know. You know, Nintendo's already moved on to next gen. <laughs> and Nintendo knows that in the U.S. They haven't had any major lawsuits outside of it. There's no one in Japan suing them. There's no one in any other country really going after them now, except in France now. A government agency is actually going after them because Nintendo was knowingly selling defective products. I love Nintendo. I think they make generally great stuff. And we know their hardware is typically made to last, which is a bit of a different type of hardware. So, of course, it's not going to have the same durability. It's a, a, a tablet form. We know tablets are more fragile on the whole. Nintendo did put a plastic screen on it, which actually makes it more durable than a glass screen because it's not going to crack as easily, uh, even though it scratches easily. But still, uh, design choices aside, uh, Nintendo usually makes products that are more um, durable. But this time around, the Joy-Cons especially seem to be not perfectly designed we know about joy-con wobble 
That's not in any of these lawsuits, but the wobble where, where the uh, plastic nub kind of loosens up in there on the rail and then it kind of wobbles a little bit. Uh, it's fixable if you change out the, the plastic nub lock for a metal one, but again, that's a user mod. Obviously, we know that plastic nub can just be broken and then your joy count guns can't lock on at all. Uh, that was a, that was the thing that was happening at the beginning of the switch life cycle. Um, but yeah, like the, the one issue they're talking about were, oh, the Joy-Cons were modified and fixed. They fixed the antenna issue. So there was a fix on the left Joy-Con that fixed the antenna issue because the antenna was running too close to the battery and that kind of created interference between the palm and the battery. And when that happened, it would affect the connectivity with your Switch. Uh, they, moved the, they moved the antenna up along the side, kind of like Spawnwave did back when he did a video um, where he manually fixed it. <clears throat> so the antenna redesigned the board and had the antenna run away from the battery up, up towards the front. Uh, and that, that fixed it. So, yeah, Nintendo, uh, I'm, I'm glad that someone's holding them the task. We're, we're a Nintendo channel. We love Nintendo. As much as I'm literally, after my kids go to school today, going to go out to my local uh, store and try to stand in line uh, to get a, a, a very limited supply of Xbox Series X. And if the lines are already too long, then I guess I'll try my luck online. But as I'm waiting to do that, as it's like, you know, <laughs> almost 5 a.m., uh, you might wonder why I'm even awake at this point. Yes, I did sleep. <laughs> um, it, it's crazy to me to think that we here we are heading into almost the fourth year of Switch. Like next year, it's March 3rd and on, is the fourth year of Switch. That they still have this problem and they're just purposely choosing not to address it. It's been literally acknowledged by many different companies of Nintendo, including Nintendo of America, to be a real issue. And Nintendo of Japan has still refused to do anything to fix it. And now this French government agency is holding them the task. They're saying, look, this is unacceptable. 65% failure rate is not acceptable. So I didn't realize the failure rate was that high. I got to be honest. I was thinking it was being ignored because maybe the failure rate was 25, 30% in the first year. I figured it was much higher over like, you know, two, three, four years, of course. But, you know, in the first year, I figured, oh, it must be more like 20, 25%. 65%. Damn. Here's hoping that regardless of the lawsuit and the money that Nintendo will probably pay for losing it, um, that Nintendo actually fixes it. Won't that be something? All right, folks. I'm Nintendo Robojance from Nintendo Prime. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.